This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is the number one mentoring program that teaches you e-commerce from scratch. Change has a real community with real results. I have been working with Ryan for many years now and have attended many of his events and retreats across the world and got to meet members and the amazing community of like-minded people. Ryan works with a lot of big names in the business world, helping them build online businesses and e-commerce. Change offers personal one-on-one support, no experience needed, but like anything, this takes time and is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you put the work in, you will get the results. E-commerce and online shopping is getting bigger and bigger. This is a great opportunity for anyone that is looking for financial freedom. For more information, go follow Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help you get started and build a successful online business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Jamesy Brown. Jamesy, how are you? Lovely, brilliant. I'm glad to be here. You know what I mean? I really um, was looking forward to it. So yeah. thanks for having me on your show. Good to have you on. Started yeah. off in the military, end up involved in bank robberies. Innocent man was killed. Yeah. You end up doing an 18 stretch. You came out. You end up Amy Winehouse's bodyguard, partying with Amy. Right, yeah. Mixing with all the celebs. Mm-hmm. Fascinating story. We'll plug your book also straight away. Nice one, yeah. Not an ordinary memoir. That went to number two two years ago, that did. I'll try and get it at number one. Yeah, yeah, nice. Story. I'll bet you will. <laughs> <laughs> um, which we'll touch on. Where can people buy your book, James? On Amazon. Amazon? Yes, yeah, yeah. It's called Not a Normal Memoir because it, my life hasn't been mm. normal. Do you know what I mean? I was a national fencing champion at 16. I won a scholarship when I was 10 to go to a top private boarding school. Um, all my family was straight. My brother's a professor. He goes, who's at Loughborough? And then it was me. <laughs> the black sheep. Yeah. What the fuck well, happened, James? Well, as I, you know, I've said before, you know, I was very, just very curious. And when you don't have a, 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 a father, especially as a boy, it's, you know, you're slightly handicapped from the beginning, even though you don't realise it, mm-hmm. you know. And... Um, like Nietzsche, the uh, the philosopher, you know, like Frederick Nietzsche, he, like, he goes, uh, if you haven't got a father, invent one. And that's when I went, fuck you, you know what I mean? You don't know nothing because you can't invent things, you know what I mean? That, you know, it's not there because then it's, yeah, you know, you're not living the real life as it's coming at you, you know? Mm-hmm. Before we get into everything though, James, I always like to go back to the start with my guests. Yeah. Get more of a bit of understanding about you, uh-huh. where you grew up and how it all began. So, uh, yeah, I grew up, I grew up in, I was born in the University College Hospital, which is quite ironic, as I will find out later, um, and uh, which is down by Euston. And then um, I've got five, I've got five sisters and a brother, and I was the youngest of them. And, um, you know, they was all very, uh, they've all, all been straight, all had great jobs and everything, you know. And, um, I, you know, we, as a family, you know, we, you know, we, we we're, Academic, we're quite sound as well, you know what I mean? You know, my mum was like that. She's quite strict, you know what I mean? You know, and um, yeah, and basically, you know, I, I I didn't have a bad upbringing, do you know what I mean? It was a good upbringing, really good, do you know what I mean? You know, what were you like at school? Uh, I was up for everything. In what sense? Just everything, anything. I loved it. I like, you know, when I used to press my own uniform like when, I was, when I was younger, couldn't wait to get into school, you know. And uh, like to be with your friends and all that. And um, then I won a scholarship when I was 10 and I went away to Mayfield College in Sussex. That was a real culture shock. And um, I was like, everyone else had loads of money, you know what I mean? They all come from like proper, you know, like wealthy f- backgrounds and that. And, um, but once I had all me, like, cause you have to get all your stuff and all that, you know what I mean? For rugby, fucking this, that, a million sports and different, track just everything you know hats and everything and um 
And then I saw these um, these masks and foils and I went, and when you come out of Camden Town, it's like, it, I'm, look at this here, you know what I mean? It's like something off the, you know, like you watch the Musketeers or something. I went, I've got to have a go at this. And I didn't realise, you know, what a brilliant sport it was, you know what I mean? You know, both intellectually and physically. And um, and it hurts as well. Does that even with all the padding on? Yeah. You end up like, it's like you've been whipped or something, you know what I mean? You get all yelled out with welts, all dots on you, you know, from the foil or airplay, like big marks on, you, on your legs from airplay, you know. Mm. And um, it was like, I went to, to my, so my time at school was very different when I was away at boarding school because um, I was getting taken out of classes because I was, I was with the national fencing team by the time I was 13. And we used to go up to London every Wednesday, up to Barons Court, uh, uh, to the um, Queen's Tennis Club. And the, the defensing, national fencing team used to train there every Wednesday. And um, one of the coaches, Professor Pittman, was my coach. But you don't get to that standard unless the people with you and your team or whatever are of a higher standard as well. Do you know what I mean? So like, I was very lucky there that my you know my peers were uh, were very good. You know, and um, yeah, and um, but my time there was, was you know was uh, was uh, I really loved it there. People would think you wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? But I loved it. And I was very and I was at boarding school. You know, my brother he was in upper sixth, and I think I seen him four times. <laughs> Did you go on with your brother? I'm very proud of my brother, but we because of that age gap, and he was he went away to school when he was seven, you know, and um, and his like my other my extended family and that they looked after him. Do you know what I mean? Like you know, my on my dad's side, a little bit more posh, up, and so he didn't have it like I did. Do you know what I mean? I was like, you know, uh, you know, I grew up in the flats. You know what I mean? And it's uh, slightly different. You know. You're like an angel in front of your mum, but you know an absolute, you know like, you know like street freaking, you know just out having a, having a laugh, playing football because you could back then, you know. And this was in, um, you know, the late sixties. When was the first time you got in trouble? I got, I got, I got when I was at school. I got uh, at Euston Station. I just to, to, to take toys out of there for the yeah, for the other ones. They go like. Like the like James Bond toys, you know them cars or things like that. There, so I got we got I went to trouble for that, and um, and my mum went berserk. So and I never that was it. Then I never got into trouble again after that, um, until the end of a uh, when I got into trouble at boarding school. What happened? So I got to the fifth year, and it was brilliant. You know what I mean? And um, and I, you know, I was going away to Europe. Like lots of weekends, right? My mum's on a sewing machine, you know what I mean? They're doing cleaning jobs with my sisters, all that. But I'm going away to all Europe, you know, and um, you know, learning all these different cultures, you know, it, it, it was amazing. And um, on the day that I would become national, become when I become national fencing champion, that was at St. Paul's in Dulwich, famous thing. They got they have a dedicated fencing hall, massive it is, and uh, all around the walls are like. Epes, sabers, and foils, you know. And we, when we used to go to these top private boarding schools like Charterhouse, Westminster, right, we used to take trophies. Like it might be a glove or something like that. You know what I mean? I was there. Well, I took a I took a foil off the uh, uh, off the wall. A what? A foil. You know, like, you know, one of the weapons. Yeah, 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 Put yeah. it in my bag. Is that what that's called? A foil. We have did three different weapons, and they're three different disciplines. Mm -hmm. And three different targets on your on your body, you know. To train I just for. thought it was all the one. No, 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 no. Just try and hit the so body. So like basically, saber it would be from the body upwards. You okay. know what I mean? Epe is the whole of the body. You know what I mean? Which is like the old dueling uh, method. Yeah. And, and foil is like the sport that's really like faster. What's you know? the one that's in the Olympics? They're all they're all in it. So the free the free kind of category. They're, they're all in it, and also modern pentath modern, modern pentathlon. That was in it. Uh, and I was going to, whilst we discussed that later on, yeah. What makes somebody good at fencing? Is it the kind of agility, movement, skill, speed? Oh, yeah, yeah, everything? definitely. Yeah, absolutely. The whole, it's the whole package. You know what I mean? I've done a million sports, you know. How can you see through the kind of mesh? So everything's just slightly, would be just slightly darker, you know. But um, once, it's like any, you know, once you get it, I mean, from a standing start, the tip of a foil, to a lunge is quicker than a Formula One car, the speed of it. 
You can see it. You can Google it and see it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so speed for me and footwork and everything. You know, like was you know we we learned all that. Like in Hungary, play like in Hungary, they couldn't pick up a weapon for over a year until they'd done a year's footwork. That's how important it was. You know what I mean? And it's the sister, it's the sister uh, thing to boxing, as golf is to tennis. Mm -hmm. You know, with the swing. Do you think somebody who does fencing would be a good boxer? What I gleaned from that. That I knew that boxers couldn't be dummies. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, boxers are not. It's a crap. Yes, they're, you know, they're not. You know what I mean? You know, they, they, they don't get enough credit. What they get, people just think that's. They just think they just think they're like, you yeah. know, like fucking like pugilism. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? But it's not. You know, it's a real um, skill and art. Were you starting to steal then? Yeah, but again, I, at that time, I didn't. I didn't think it was like that. You know, and what it was that. I, so I won that competition on the Sunday. On the Monday morning, I was expelled. For what? For taking the foil. You get expelled for that? Yeah. Because my coach, he went and told him, he said, yeah, he said, two of us, two of us. I had two Why of did us. you steal it? As a trophy. It was like a trophy, you know what I mean? say, so, yeah, this is what we had at that time, you know, boom, boom, boom. But I took one, my friend took one, and two guys from London did. And the thing is, you know, I was all being, you know, I was all being like, um, Groomed, you know, to go to go to the Olympics and that because my, my uh, one of the guys with me was his name was um, Bill Gosby. He went to Olympics three times, so that was one. That was what my thought was going to happen for me. You know what I mean? You know, little did I know it's going to go in, in a completely different uh, direction. You know? Do you think that was the main kind of thing that ch totally changed your life from the positive it, what, that, to the negative? I don't think I could ever properly got over that. It was so devastating to me, you know what I mean, at that, at that age. You it know? seems a bit harsh, though. It was super harsh. And we got banned from the sport for a year. You know, it was very, uh, they were very difficult to, especially at that age, you see. You know, I was 16, 17, 16, going up 17. So what did you do after that? I didn't do too much. Uh, uh, and then I, it was, it, was, it was suggested that I should join the army, you know, to keep out of trouble. <laughs> Never fucking worked, did it? No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so yes, I joined the army at 17, 17 and a half. And, um, I was in that for nearly four years. A great time. I was, uh, I won the uh, Royal Tournament fencing. Um, they, they used to give me my own Jeep to drive around in. You know what I mean? Within the first nine months, I was hanging out with all the instructors. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I was just, I don't know why I just got on well with, you know what I mean? I don't know. And maybe, and obviously I was a lot older, and maybe because of not having a father and I'm, I'm more, you know, like learned. But I didn't even know how to fucking wash properly or do, or do anything until I started doing judo at seven. And I used to see the, all the older men, you know, how they were tired and they felt down and using towel and all that. Because my mum and my sisters weren't going to tell me, you know what I mean? You know? So I've always had to learn everything myself, basically. Everything almost, you know. Where was your dad? He died when I was one. He died of cancer at 39 years of age. So it was much more devastating for my brother and my sisters and that because they were much older. So they knew him, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't. I just see a picture on the wall. How do you think that moulds you? Because I always say it, but everybody who's in prison and that, the majority don't have a dad or a father figure for that discipline, for that understanding of life to mould them, to guide them. It's the wisdom. Yeah. If you, if you, I mean, there's no guarantee. I've heard lots of horrendous stories of people, you know, and bad fathers and that. You know, it's like, you know, so I, you know what I mean? So I have to say to myself, well, okay, that's the way it was. And, you know, I got on with it. Do you know what I mean? You know, I think you give me more character and personality to get involved with things. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You know. What did you do after the military? Um, I started working down, I, I started running over Hampstead Heath. There's a chance of me getting back in the national squad. And um, and I met these guys over there for my sister and my brother-in-law, which is Terry Ellis, the, the older one. And um, Terry, the bank robber. Yeah. Yeah, I know Terry. Yeah, yeah. He's his dad is my brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I know Terry well as well, you know. And um, and then I and these guys said, "Come down to West End." You know what I mean? They give me hundred pound a day, so I started selling stuff outside of Selfridges. It's like something out of a film or something. But this, this was actually happening. And that was back in 1981. And um, 
I started seeing these security vans and everything pulling pull up and the thing. The closer I got to them, I'm not doing anything. I just, you know, and I, then I started seeing this girl. Her name was Shani. She's fucking amazing. She's about 10 years older than me. And um, I got a flat in the West End, amazing. And this all cost money. You know, and I started feeling myself, right. And her, her previous boyfriend, it sounds funny, but he ended up going to jail for, for, Rob, for robbing banks and that. And he got seven years. And off, you know, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, yeah, you know what I mean? You're like, ex army, you're not like up there, but what are they going to give me? Like, five, if it goes wrong, what are they going to give me? Five, six? You know, there's lots of money to be had back then, you know? Lots of money. You know, like a purple bag, you knew it was 25 grand. You know, the post office things, they're, they're the only ones who's not, who's not, they're insured to carry whatever across the pavement. And that's in one of my chapters, it's called Going Across the Pavement, which is terminology for having bits of work, you know. And, um, yeah. So, um, what was the first job you'd done? What happened was, when I was in the army, I, I fucking, um, I got into a lot of trouble there, right towards there. Once it, once it had all gone pear-shaped for me, they had me locked up, like, first of all, with the, uh, the King's Own Regiment, you know, the, the, the yeah. Scots Regiment, you know what I mean? And so I nicked the tam shanty, tucked that away, and uh, other bits and pieces. And then one day they was like, we was outside and they was going up, we had paint in some fence or something, you know what I mean? They, 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 well, I thought, well, they're lovely guys, you know what I mean? Boom, boom, boom. And they left me for like literally a couple of minutes. And over the dinner, I'd got everything outside, you know what I mean, for after dinner. And I was gone into the woods, off. And um, I didn't last long and uh, got arrested. Then they put me with the King's Own Regiment, which is all scarcers. Fucking brilliant time, you know. And um, with them. And then I uh, went on my toes again, and I went to that regiment, and they were able to get me identification to go back to the UK. So I went back twice. And when I got arrested, they took me to um, the headquarters of um, Interpol. I was going, this is him. I can walk him around and go, what the fuck, you know? And um, he, might, he, he must have had, God, knows, he was in the wrong job. He should have been clairvoyant or something, you know? And um, yeah, so they brought me back, private plane. And then the third time I escaped, right, they didn't bring me back. They said, fuck this. And they took me to Chelmsford Young Offenders uh, Institute in my army uniform. I fucking stuck right out immediately, you know? Yeah, it's that soldier boy and all that bomb. I'll give them their dues, they only try to protect you in there, do you know what I mean? So like, because I hadn't had a criminal background, they don't want you to, do you know what I mean, to mix with people, you know what I mean? Even though I knew, I did actually know a couple of guys in there, you know what I mean, like Perry Buckland, you know, it was a very famous thing with him, you know. And, um, but I ended up having a fight. And so from being the gym orderly, I'm now, they put me on the wing, so then I'm having more fights. And they sent me up to the Midlands. And they, but they reduced my sentence. Because when I stabbed the German, I got three and a half years. What did you stab him for? Because I had trouble with him the week, two weeks before. And the, the, the German, big, great, big German geezer uh, in, in this club. And um, he's a cunt. I'd just, been, I'd just been accepted for the Army School of Excellence. A lot of people don't even know it existed, right? And um, that was a big, big deal, you know. That was it for me, you know. I was like 20 years of age, you know, and uh, that was it. Very few people, you can't volunteer for that. Very few people get selected for that. And um, fuck, and just as I'm about to go back to Aldershot, that's when I stabbed the German in Osnabrück in the fucking town. Almost like saying like, fuck you, I'm off. But the two guys I'm with, they gave me up. Was that the first time you were violent? Or were you violent before then? That was the first time really I was, yeah, I'd say. Why stab him? Because he was a fucking giant. <laughs> I'm going to roll around the floor with someone like that. They're a fucking ape, you know what I mean? Where'd you plug him? Uh, in the side. I was very lucky. because What you don't realise is, is that 
it's um it's it's like an instant and it's a lottery then whether someone lives or dies mm. once you've once you've plunged someone you know what i mean you know yeah because you don't know where the arteries are the veins exactly it's a lottery organ, organs you know and whether someone mm. arrives to help them in time and whatever mm -hmm. you know and i took off and i'd been um i was with the uh, the army tug of war team with the he was a jock sas geezer and fuck, he used to get he used to get me out the fucking jail to go with him right and um i had some fucking laughs with him in it and, and that lot uh because they're like cowboys i'm telling you they do what they liked you know and he was about five foot six five foot six and i called him the boss and we do all training like with um these big barrels of concrete you know you'd be on the end of these ropes it fucking kills you you know what i mean it's like you know and put all that tacky on your hands and uh well whilst i was there with the, with the army uh, uh, tug of war team they all come the sbs and the police and that and obviously the guys would give me up and bring me back to the uh, the station then they've got the fucking knife there and this is a big this is like a bowie knife type thing in his army that's like that's like a little pen knife in them places you know what they got fucking, you know they had great big things wrapped around us all the time you know and um and that was it it was all over for me court martial and um give me three and a half years and even when i got to when i got to, 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 to chelmsford uh one of the officers there who's a po he uh he's going to be I said Jane, he said brain is going. Said that's that's um very severe. So these guys here, yeah, they don't get that for that. You know what I mean? Which is a bit of an indictment on you know on it. You know what I mean? Now there was I think it's five years or something, yeah. isn't it? And back then, like you know, people stabbing people, you get nine months. You know, I, but I reduced mine to eighteen months, and I got out. But in that time, it, the, the the crime thing had started to get into my mind. You know what I mean? And um, and I don't do things by half, and I'm thinking like I don't not do fucking burglary and all that sort of thing. I'm going at it big time, you know. And um, was it prison that done that to you, or do you think you were already going that way anyway? Once I got once I got kicked out of the army, I was being, I was in big trouble then because once you're used to handling guns and fucking and having that life of your strategy and you know and everything else. You know what I mean? They're the only skills I had out there. Do you know what I mean? Except then myself and personality, you know. Why do you think you destroyed everything that was good in your life? You don't intend to do it. It's just that there comes times, and it's when people say there's a fork in the road, there's a million fucking forks in the road as you go through. And, you know, like, and, and this, is what I, this is what I'm saying to you. If at the beginning, you're starting out and the steering wheel's a little bit fucking wobbly. You know what I mean? Because, because you haven't had started out with a stable background and like your old man going, you'll be in fucking big trouble. Is that the other? You know I mean? Your mum and that tries her hardest, but then the older you get, you know, the less sort of thing, the authority, you lose it. But I don't think, I think by that time, if you had a dad, you have, a lot, you have more respect for them. You know what I mean? You know, and hopefully that they've done all right and you, you know, you mould yourself from them potentially. I presume. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what did you do then after your three and a half? What was the first job you done? I had a um, I had a static bit of work, put it that way. Because uh, I never got caught for these some of these bits of work. Obviously, my first lots of work. You know what I mean? I never ever got caught for them. You know. Yeah, you can only talk about the ones you've been done for. Exactly. You end up fucking back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually, when I go, with, I'd have some lovely bits of work, you know, and. Um, I'd gone away to Spain and I came back and I was going to have this amazing bit of work that, of a van coming into a certain place with 800 grand on it. I'm coming the back way, had to go over these railway tracks and everything, you know what I mean? And um, when we went to have that bit of work, um, we all got boiler suits on and fucking everything else. At five o'clock in the morning, it's light. So you stick out like a sore thumb. So we had to abort it. And then whilst we were waiting on that, one of the other guys uh, uh, said, you know, like, I've seen a nice bit of work, guard coming out of Bell Size Park tube station, you can go and have a bat. You can because what you do, you take the guard back to the van, you know what I mean, have a load up, demand up, they call it, you know what I mean? Like throw out some fucking vans. So, you know what I mean? You're not just taking what he had, 
you're asking, you're demanding him to throw out more bags. Otherwise, he, but, he's, but where is it? It's like, it's like a triple X rated fucking play that I was, that, that you write almost, do you know what I mean? Mm. Exit, left, exit, right, their props. You don't expect fucking, you know, it to go, you know, as boss side as it did for me at, at, at one point in my life, literally. What was the first one you'd done? What was the feeling like? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And to this day, and I've done so many things, uh, you know, I've skydived all around the world, nothing compares to that. Because you are literally, you know, you're putting your, your whole, you know, your whole life on the line, you know what I mean, you know. And back then when you had the swing and all that there, the one thing you knew you was going to get was a fucking good kicking. Just for starters, you know what I mean, you know. And um, so, and again, and at that age, I knew I was going up against grown men. You know what I mean? They weren't me opponents, they weren't just over the police, you know what I mean, the, the swinging, the fucking flying squad, whatever you want to call them. But once I'd entered that world, they were there for you. You know, when you stepped out, well, you know, what there would be one time or whenever, and that's all they're waiting on. Allegedly, how many banks have you done? I don't people it, say. I did a few. I can like to say because they, like, one of them, they came at me, I was a single, so at one, I can't actually name the work, the, the place, but they, came, they said to me, we know you've done that bit of work. I was the lone gunman on that. I went in there. Um, I didn't even have a motorbike. I mean, I had a, you know, I had a crash on my arm. <laughs> Do you get then the buzz for that? Is it the buzz of... For me, it's money. The money, get not the, the money. power, kind of having no. people scared, full of fear. No, <clears throat> purely the money. What tool did you use? Shotgun? Yeah. yeah. Why is the shotgun always there? Uh, because it's so menacing looking. Do you think that's why it is? Because yeah, people yeah, are terrified of it? Yeah, 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 definitely. Because it's bulky. Shotguns are heavy, obviously. You get but once you put it on it off, yeah. and you've got it hanging down here, it's not, you can't see it. So yeah. that was part of the plan of using a shotgun because it was a fear factor? Yeah, 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 purely. You know what I mean? And much easier to get hold of than handguns, especially back then, you know. Um... <clears throat> but it was just literally that, like, just for the fear factor, you know. Exactly what the police, when they come in, screaming and shouting and fucking, it's that the other, it's all like to fucking get you, all, uh, you know, out of sync and everything. Well, you're doing that when you're going in and having banks, you know what I mean? And, um, I mean, I, I, the, one I, the one I can tell you, which I've got the 10 years for, which, which I had the UCH, you know, the, uh, you know, the University College Hospital at Houston, I had the bank inside there. Uh, me, John Christopher O'Connor, one of my co-defendants, uh, he was the driver on it, Terry Ellis, the fight, because he was a black cab driver. He'd been in the merchant navy, he? he's fucking amazing. If you think the young Terry Ellis is, like, the old man, beautiful. You know, really staunch guy. Uh, uh, James Killick, Johnny Lachlan, great, beautiful guy. And, um, and no, all these people, none of us, none of us ever went, had bits of work on anything before. It was like, uh, you know, I went to... Uh, when I was like football, I wasn't a football hooligan per se. You know, I was like, I went to the footballs, I was trying to recruit people. I thought this is where the tough guys were, you know. So I was like an Arsenal fucking football hooligan for about, I don't know, less than a season. But that was enough. And you know, I went to all the matches fucking having right tear ups. You know, so you front. became a football hooligan to try and recruit bank robbers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Binzi, I don't know, like uh, Binzi and uh, some of these others um, that I know. You know, have you ever done a job and someone someone's ass has went? Not their ass went, but what it is, it's uh, you don't understand. You, but you, you obviously you might do it. But it takes some fucking balls doing it. Honestly, it does. And everything I've done in my life, it's like it's it's trebly hard because you're not coming from a government position where everything you're doing is like you being okay to do it. You know, everything that you're doing is wrong from the beginning. And you've got to fight that. You know what I mean? And the more you know that, and the more fucking you have any sense in your anything, the more you know what you're doing is fucking, you know, completely and utterly mental, you know. When did it come on top? When did you get it? Was it 10, 10 years you got first time? No, no, I got 18 years. And you done 12? Away. Yeah, So that away. was your first big sentence straight away? Straight away, yeah. So what job was that then? So the, the job you got 18 years for? It was for Bellside Park when it went, when it went completely wrong, you know, and the security guard got shot dead, you know. And um, 
And he'd only been in the job fucking nine months. It was like the most awful storm that could happen because you know, you know, I, I, you know, I'll never claim to be what I'm not, sort of thing. You know, back then I was an amateur at it. At it you know what I mean? Different, different matter later on. You know, and um, what was the planning for that job, and how much were you going for? That was the demand that we were going to take him back. We were going to take him back to the van and bang on the van. And what it was, so I had two spotters over the road, uh, which was um, Johnny Lachlan and, 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 and James Killick. Then there was a. Uh, me, John Christopher O'Connor, uh, with me, yeah, we was having a bit of work. Then Terry Ellis, he's in the uh, black cab, which is just a beautiful getaway vehicle it was back then, you know what I mean? Why black cab? Because it once, there's a million of them. Once you can get, Blends, once you get in amongst them, it, which one are you going to point out? Which one is it? Mm -hmm. You know, I had a great story once I had to, and I lost, I lost some money in the fucking cab, £3,000. in one of them, like, fucking continental like, fucking bag things, you know what I mean? And what, how lucky was I in, in Oxford Street? It was one of them red cabs. So out of all the black cabs, there's a million of them, I could spot the red cab and I'm fucking running after it. But anyway, I digress because I must, and I mustn't. But uh, yeah, and, um, and you know, like the, the, the UCH one, which we got away with, it was a most complicated bit of work. I knew grown up, Men who had bits of work before, they wouldn't have that bit of work. That's how I ended up getting it, you know, because you had to go into the bowels of that place and there's all security and there's a million people in there, you know what I mean, you know, and to, you know, you'll pull a balaclava on out in front, in front of the public. That takes some fucking arse, I can assure you. Why? Because the moment you've done that, you've separated yourself from the rest of the world and time starts to slow down. How much did you get from that job? Uh, I had about 15, 20 grand, left 80 behind. Why? Because I'm shouting for a bag to be thrown over. So I've, what happened was, it actually in, in there, you've got like a bandit screen. It's like a proper bank, you've got all the tellers and all that. And a couple of weeks before, when we were practicing for the bit of work, you know what I mean? I've got the stopwatch and all that. You know what I mean? I'll get right into it, I do. And um, it stopwatch and like practicing it, going through the window. Because no one's fucking telling us. You're like, there's not a manual of all this, you know what I mean? <laughs> Actually, I should write one. <laughs> you know, the how-to of fucking yeah. Robbie Manks. But, uh, um, and when my friend, when he, uh, when, when he swung at that there, the fucking handle went straight through as well. And so, and he, where he didn't let go of it, you know, it had all these, because we're trying to replicate the same screen with all the white wires in it, but as near as, you know what I mean? You know, and... But, and so what we learned from that, but it's too late for him, he's got, he's got fucking badly gashed here, it was that you hit it in like that with the head, boom, mm. like that, so you don't have that, you know what I mean, swinging where you're out of control of it, basically, you know. So when I went and had that bit of work, I'm fucking now, I've got the bag. And I'm, I'm going in there, first of all, there's all doctors and everything in there, you know what I mean, and I've gone in there, I've got the coat on, and uh, the, the bit of work's been given to us by someone in there. You know what I mean? So this is not like, this is not coming from like guesswork outside, you know what I mean? And say job. Yeah. And uh, so I walk around the first time. But by the time I actually get to the fucking bank, there's mayhem. Uh, my pal, he's fucking got a, ca a staircase load of people laying down everywhere. You know what I mean? Fucking get out on the fucking floor. They're throwing wallets and everything at him, you know what I mean? You know, I haven't even got to the fucking bank yet. You know what I mean? Why'd they do that? Adrenaline. We're at it. We're up for it. You know what I mean? Just like, you've just gone a bit too early, you know? And um, anyway, so I get to the bank, from hit the fucking screen, and unbelievably, it went straight in on the woman sat behind there, because was, they was actually only held on little nails. You know, he said, look right, fucking thing, like three fucking, um, uh, three, like, key locks and this, that, the other, you know. Anyway, we're there and I'm fucking straight in there, but I've not got a bag. So I've, I've, all I can use is their cash bag things, you know what I mean, to, like, get it all in. And you have, like, when you do something like this, you have the, there's this, like, sweet window moment, you know, the sweet spot. I wrote in one of my poems called The Sweet Spot, you know. And, um, and that's it, and then you've got to be out. I don't, it doesn't matter what, what's in there, you know, the crown fucking jewels. If you 
if you want your liberty, you got to go. And that, and that then you see, unlike other bits of work, is only half the work bit of done. Because now we've got to come right the way back through all them big halls and all them people and everything else, all the, all the maintenance people and all that, you know, and out we go, me and him, to the, uh, uh, to the first chop over vehicle, get round the back, right near where they, you know when the explosions and the bombs and all that went off? You know, that, that square there, just behind there. Then we go, come into the bottom end of one of the, the hotel down there, up through the elevator, out the front where the black cab's waiting, and bosh, and we're off. Boom. You know what I mean? So that was such a complicated bit of work. So then when the, with the bell size park bit of work, you're thinking, yeah, lovely. You know what I mean? That's going to be so easy. Take some balls there because you've got to stand. I, I was stood there in a tennis, tennis uniform. Why? Right. Because there's a tennis court behind there. And I said, the only way I can get near the van is to be dressed like that. So they're not thinking in a million years, would I be a, 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 an armed robber, you know? But in the tennis racket, I've got, I've got a, uh, instead of a tennis racket, I've got a sawn-off shotgun, you know? And, 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 and John Christopher O'Connor is with me. He is dressed in a boiler suit and he's got a pickaxe handle. And he's going to meant to be going up to the guard, right? To threaten him with a pickaxe handle, give me that fucking money, get back to the fucking van, you know what I mean? Boom, boom, boom. And I'm just going to be there this time. Oh, I was always the striker. And I just thought, fuck it. You know, I, I, I'll sit back, you know, and observe. I was, I'm on right control. Anyway, I'm looking over the road down at, you know what I mean? This is in Bellsize Park, down Avastock Hill, very busy, very busy. And it's baking, baking hot day, you know. And we're on, you're on there. And then you're sort of thinking to yourself, there has the van arrived, maybe? Maybe, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? And, and you've got, and the longer it ta the longer it goes on for, there's more opportunity for you, for for someone that's like our soul to go, per se. Even though that never happened, thank God, with, with any of the people I was with. But there is this opportunity, you know. Because as I say, yeah, the time is slowing down, you know. And then, because we can't see the guard coming out the train station, you know what I mean? Only the spotters can, and their signals for when it's going to happen is they're going to leave. So as they're about to leave, I'm now reaching for him behind me and I, and I, I don't want to take my eyes off of them there. And I can't see him this, that, the other. And now I can see the fucking guard's helmet coming along. And that's it because of where I am built and everything. Whoosh, I go around in, in front and I, but I should have been behind, you know, because he ain't got in front of me, you know. And I'm not going to fucking, when I'm going on a mission, I'm going on a mission and I'm, I don't fail, you know. And, you know, but unfortunately, it's just awful, right? But what happened then, so as I get the, the shotgun out the out the, um, the tennis racket, I'm just about to go and get it, I get to, to get it up. But he's now right near me, the guard, you know what I mean? And they might have told him, because he'd been in the job nine months, and they might have said, this could happen to you, or that could happen to you, this, that, the other. But the actual reality of you looking down two pieces of cylindrical steel you know what I mean? And, and, a, and, a, and a young guy in a tennis fucking outfit pointing a gun at you must have been a real, real overload of, of his sensory uh, things, you know what I mean? And he just kept walking at me. He'd come right at me, the fucking gun went off in my hand. And you might go, what do you mean that gun went off in your hand? Do you know what I mean? The gun is, and I was a military man and I didn't even have my hand on the trigger, you know what I mean? Or, or always have it naturally, right, along the side by the guard. Always, you know what I mean. You know, it'd be different if you was about if you was about to come into contact. Then you obviously would move your finger, you know. But I know exactly what was uh, what was happening, and the fucking gun went off, and it was fucking hurt. It was really, really, really bad, bad. You know, the sound of it for starters, you know. And then the guy he went fucking backwards and down. Uh, but I'm tunnel vision by now. You, you know, like when you get tunnel vision, do you know what I mean? That nothing else matters except what you are doing at that moment. Nothing. Like, almost like if a lorry come at you that way, you'd be knocking it out the fucking way because you're going to get whatever it is. It could be, it could be like, you might be going to save someone or something. You can get tunnel vision from that. You know what I mean? 
in this instance, this was for not good purposes, you know. And um, when he went down, I just picked up the, uh, I picked up, the, there was like, I don't know, like 3,000, 4,000 pounds in coins. And that is super, super heavy, you know. And, uh, and then a big bag of cash. I know, uh, I'm running away and I'm going, John, John, come, come, you know what I mean? And he come back and he helped me carry the, uh, the bags. And then, um, then we just started running and some people started running after us because we're running now down the side of Belsize Park tube station towards Belsize Park Lawn Tennis Club. And because we're going to go through the, through the, um, the tennis courts, down through these little woods things, like a little cops thing, to the thing. And But if you got that far, you basically got away even before you get into the fucking vehicle, you know. Um... And I just remember turning around and I'm like that, the people running, not to fuck, I didn't even point the gun at them, but just turn around and I'm like that there and they just dropped, they didn't want to have it, they want to have it. So down we go. And then we're, we're not arguing in the back of the fucking cab, but like we're fucking like, we know something bad has happened. Because when you're in, it's, it's automatic, it was all, it's automatic to me, you see. And I will then like debrief myself oh, so when I'm going up bomb and bomb, I'm set to do this job, that's it. I never ever have gone to fucking shoot or hurt anybody. Ever. You know what I mean? That's not what I'm that wasn't not what I was about, you know. About just about money, you know. And um Yeah, but people look from the outside will think, well, you still took a gun. You still robbed up. Yeah, we're that. gonna get to the yeah. trial then when we can discuss this then and what mm -hmm. happens there because it's quite it's really something, you know. Well, did you know he was dead once you shot him? Not at the time, no, that's my whole point. So then I went to play, I used to play football every Friday afternoon with all like the meat traders, the black cabs, I was, like, all these group, you know, of um, different guys, you know. And um, then someone come up to me like this guy, called, you know, brainless fucking Dennis. And he said, do you know, like, bomb, bomb, bomb. And that was it, that's when I knew. And like, I swear to you, like, the bacon not down if it, it got darker. Did you, have a wig or any, did you have a wig or anything on? No, literally as I was. Because I'd never ever been in trouble before, you know. Back then they didn't have cameras or anything, you know. What about fingerprints? My partner had, my partner, he had a, he had a, he had a balacarver. What about fingerprints? We didn't leave nothing behind. Nothing? No. So we come away, have the chop up, get, have the thing there, and I'm telling them, I've got to leave, I've got to go. And and, uh, and and a couple of them, I don't say so they're going, no, 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 you have to go around and give the money out to everyone, you know what I mean? Boom, boom, boom. Um, you know, because it's, you know, I planned all the bits of work, I, you know what I mean? Like, every, no one was a, a leader, but people followed me, you know what I mean? You know, everyone, you know, everyone had their own fucking what they're about, you know. And, um, and that night I got nicked. That night. Where? In Finchley Road in a club called the uh, the, the Low Profile. It was like a very famous club at the time. But it's okay robbing a bank when somebody gets shot, somebody dies, they, they enhance, then... It, it gets multiplied yeah. by a thousand. Easy. The intensity yeah, what comes on. Someone loses a leg. You then have the murder squad, the flying squad, mm -hmm. all the other police forces, everything coming at you. It's one of their own, isn't it? Security or not, it's still one of theirs. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I was like, Colin, it's probably worse calling a security guard than as a civilian. Yeah. And now you see, and now was, now, and, and this will now start, you know, your viewers and that will start, you know, is what, is what you um, would be alluding to and going like, well, fuck me, what are you bring the thing, thing on for? As soon as that happens, as soon as we get nicked this, that, the other, like we all, we admit to what we've done. Do you know what I mean? Because we aren't fucking seasoned, fucking villains, or this, that, the other, like, no, this, that, the other. And because of what happened, it was just so fucking, just so like, you know what I mean? And because never, ever, ever meant to kill him, you know what I mean? It's like, two of them had been seen at, at, the, at that bit of work the week before, that's how they got on us. And they, they, they arrived in their own cars, you know? So they was under observations from the afternoon. They had squads of undercover police on them, you know. And um, then I'm nicked 
and, and straight away I'm putting on the higher security, category A, and then I'm putting with, and I always say to myself, like, I'd, when I went there, there's a particularly good intake of, uh, 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 of criminal at the time, you know, some legends, they were, you know what I mean? Um, uh, you know, like, I was with, like, David Fraser. Who's he? You know, one of the Frasers, you know, like, Frankie Frank Fraser. Fraser, yeah, one of these boys, yeah. They look the fucking same, you know. Uh, I mean, who was there then? There's just lots of people. Um, what else was there? Like Chris McCormack. Um, lots, lots of guys there, do you know what I mean? I think he was in that Patrick Adams when I was there. I knew him. He used to give me puff under the door for me. I didn't even smoke back then. I never, never took drugs back then, you know? And, um, and then I was put onto this, the highest security you can ever get. And that was, I was put in the Wendy house in Brixton. And there's only six of us there. One was the, uh, it was Michael Bettany, the MI5 spy. The other was uh, Luigi Sartorava. He was the P2 Bologna bomber. Italian yeah. bomber? Yeah, yeah. Did he kill like a fucking hundred people or something or not? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> fucking naughty. But that's political. The, the, the politics, the, 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 the right wing government got them to do that and to blame the left wing. To say it's them, you know what I mean? So let's get back into power. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Yeah, all things fucking serious, it was. Yeah, I think they were doing stuff like that in Belfast as well, like blowing yeah. things up and blaming the IRA, blaming the UDA. Just yeah, of to course. Cause more yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. A state attention, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, what Gladio was all about, where um, these, these governments, in case, you know, they used to bury all the guns and everything everywhere, all around, all around Europe, you know what I mean? And you, it's certain you might get. Asked in, in 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 the military if he was like you know, have a certain just depending whatever you know but anyway that that was all going at that time you know so he's like and, and as a and as a consequence of all that that's why I've, I don't believe in conspiracies that ever but I I have my own vision of this world you know this down view of this mm. world when did you find out he was the security guard was dead in the afternoon so now I'm just, now I'm trying to get away the next day or oh, so no, that day so you killed the security guard. That day you tried to get away, and then that night you got charged. Yeah. Why did you not fuck off anyway? Why were you? I stuck, tried to. Why were you around the vicinity? I tried to, but as I said to you just earlier on, some of my, a couple of my, well, one of my co-defendants was going, "No, you, you've got to stay here. You've got to give the money out to everyone. They won't see me. You know what I mean? They won't take the money. You know, we know it's on top. You know what I mean? And they just, you know, they just want me to give it to them. That fucking cost us dearly." Give the money to who? Was everybody getting to, a share? We were getting a share from the there. Yeah. Do you not just think about taking the money anyway? Because you're already fucked. You're up for a murder charge. Yeah, but at that time, you got to understand. I'm 22 years of age. I ain't got a fucking clue uh, really about it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the the shit. Everything that you could never imagine, but you would say something. Yeah, this could go wrong. Fucking went wrong, and a man lost his life over it. You know. How was that feeling, knowing that you'd kill someone? Because I never meant to do it, ironically, uh, of course I'm fucking really, you know, I empathise and don't just sit with that family terribly, but I never meant to do it. So, you know, obviously I'm culpable for it, you know, because as we, as if we can explain, as we go through the, you know, with the trial and that, they proved, and they really wanted me for murder, and us for, for murder or anything, but it was proven that it was an accident. The gun was actually faulty. So when he ran into it, it just fucking went off in my hand. I had a big scar here in my hand here from when it fucking come back on me, you know, because I wasn't expecting it to go up. And if you ain't holding one of them properly, it can fucking break your hand. You know what I mean? So it went boom like that. And obviously we, when they'd done the autopsies and everything, it was literally close flat to him here. So it wasn't like I pulled the fucking thing. He ran into it. You were lucky to get culpable, though, even though, because you had the shotgun in your hands. So, yeah, so what's happened is, so, and it was really touch and go, you know, uh, I know you know, as I say, I was in with, you know, the uh, Mickey McAvoy at the Brinks map. They'd just been arrested. So uh, Mickey McAvoy, Tony White, all these guys, and Mickey McAvoy is the one advising me now about my trial. There's only six of us there, and every time I'm coming back from the trial that night into this highest security you can imagine, they're letting me sitting I could sit in with them they're going right what's happened here and it was like everything that was 
planning to happen. Don't, it's not happening. The, the judge ain't not having it. You know what I mean? So now they say to me, right, you've got to go in there and say, like, you're not taking no part in this trial. You don't think it's fair, this, that, the other. And I'm going, it's all, fuck me. So I go back in and I'm fucking trying to say, look, this ain't fair, what you're doing. Well, they're going to get him down into the, um, you know, into the, uh, you know, into the, into the, the cells below. And, um, Again, this whole period of time, like, I always remember, I thought myself, like everything, I, I stamp it in my memory forever. It's seared in my memory, you know. Not everything, but certain moments that I know were, were massive, you know what I mean? That you're in the bowels of the fucking Old Bailey. It's like, for me anyway, it was it's surreal. It should, it should never have happened, you know what I mean? You know. How long did the trial run for? <sighs> About three weeks, I think, something like that. So what, you were charged with robbery and murder? Yeah. What were you expecting, I felt you? Well, no, so at, before we even go to trial, the, I first had the, it, she was a she was a barrister, she's a woman, and I said to her, I said, well, if we get found not guilty for murder, and, and, and um, because I always believed that would be the case, you know, and, we, uh, and for um, you know, and for manslaughter, what would that be? And she said, well, you get eighteen years if you was really lucky, maybe, and I'm like that, fucking hell. And the nearer you got to the trial, I know because she's only said this like about three or four days before the trial. I'm like, fuck me. And I got these guys telling me, you can beat this, you can get out of it. Do you know what I mean? But what it would have been, it'd be the expense of fucking everyone else. You know? What was it like going to court and seeing that guy's family? Fucking <clears throat> one of the most difficult things I've had to do in my life, you know? I have to look her in the eyes, but I can't say to her, sorry, and I can't say I never meant to do it. I would only do that when I got into the witness box. You know what I mean? So I did. I was faced and then my moment of fucking, you know, awfulness, you know. Did they offer you a deal? No. They no deal. And they wouldn't. Why would they? Well, for, for her and the family, of course they're going to try and get you for it. You know what I mean? You know. And, um, Does it still play in your mind? It's, it ruined my life completely. In a certain way. But it's understandable as well because it's still someone's life. Absolutely. So, but the thing is, sometimes I go to myself because I don't. I've never, I've never been a victim. I've never fucking ever felt sorry to myself. You know what I mean? Sometimes when things, then I, that's what I'll say to myself. Well, maybe it's because of, you know, what, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not, not as a re release or go like that thing. But I do literally. I don't say it to anyone else. But in my mind, I maybe I say that. You know? What and, are you thinking going through a trial then? So, how did they find out? Drop it from murder to culpable by him running. That's into, a manslaughter. Yeah, ma so yeah, yes. sort of took it to manslaughter. Because he says he's run into the gun. Yeah, so they proved Michael Mansfield is one of the top barristers in the country and Richard Ferguson. Richard Ferguson, they flew over from Northern Ireland for me, for my for my case, because no one else wanted to represent me, you know what I mean? And because they was going, he's just gonna sack us, you know what I mean? And he and he was the and he was the junior minister in Northern Ireland. And he's also like he he, he dealt he represented the IRA and, and other people and everything. And I was his first case over here, and he became a top, top, famous um, uh, lawyer, you know, and he was brilliant, he was. He said, I've just been in the Diplock courts where there are no members of the jury. So you first of all, you've got to consider what a privilege it is. You know what I mean? And he had the, you know, he had the, uh, you, know uh, you know, wonderful accent, you know, but accents and all that don't get you nowhere facts and reality you know and the whole thing did and it was proven that by the gun as we're driving there it's in it's in the tennis case you know and uh so it only had to drop say four inches and that would put the safety onto fire for starters you know what i mean and it had been oiled up in three and one or to make it not look all rusty because they've been buried you know so you know that's made it even more slipperier you know, it wasn't completely like fucking dripping in it, but because it had obviously been, you know, wiped down and everything. But it was a bacon hot day, and um, listen, I carry I carry his death with me. You know what I mean? It's my I, I done it. It's my fault. A genuine, genuine accident. You know. Don't worry about that. He, you know, if it was in a uh, you know an opponent in combat or you know whatever this that the other, I would have him. Oh, you know, that's a different matter. I'm not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna intentionally take a man's life who's going to fucking work. That's not what I'm about, I'm not, I'm not, that's not me, you know. Did you ever have any other security try and put it on you when you were robbing a bank or did everybody just stay back? They watched the back, yeah. Yeah, that's why, why risk your life for fucking money that's not exactly. even yours? They've been told to give it up. 
Give it's it up. Crazy. Listen, the guy's just trying to be a hero. He's just trying to do his job. I understand it, but... <clears throat> no, no. I, th I think, because he'd been in the job nine months, I just think he had a sensory overload and he just didn't listen to the commands. Fucking stop. Give, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? He just died. He just saw it. And maybe to him, his island of safety was that fucking van that was 15 foot behind me. And he's almost fucking going to walk through me to get there. You know, because obviously over the years I've thought, thought about it and such, you know, in my mind, you know. And you'll never know what, you'll never know what the reason why. But one thing is, and I don't have to say this, you know what I mean, because this is fucking, I genuinely never meant to do it. They look in your eyes, man. You know what I mean? It was a genuine accident. And then later on, the people I was with, if I'd have then gone, yeah, I was just that, yeah, but they would have gone, fuck off you. You know what I mean? You know, I learned that with some beautiful people when I was in jail. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was, you know, obviously, I, when it come to the, the when it, so they eventually, it, the jury found me not guilty of murder, but then guilty of manslaughter because they could not, there was no intent. So what they found, obviously, straight away, I was going to be found guilty of manslaughter straight away because I'm carrying a loaded shotgun. And I once done research on it. Uh, you know, there was a, dis a, a dissertation from these people, you know, at universities and about, you know, men who go on bits of work. Some that go on it with a loaded shotgun, some who don't go with a loaded shotgun, some, do you know what I mean? And, it, and they're different types of personality and they're fucking amazing, you know. And spot on, by the way. Um, but so we get fired. So we get found not guilty of, uh, of, um, of murder. They say it's manslaughter. And this is the he judge to the price, and he's the common law sergeant of the old Bailey. And he's basically telling him, you can't find him guilty of murder, is he didn't do it. It is his manslaughter, and they're trying to prove it to him. But because obviously they're also looking at that poor lady. And thinking we've got, we want to do her, we want to give her, do her some justice. You know what I mean? Maybe you know what I mean. So it's very touch and go. Because then I'd have been fucked. We'd have all been fucked for the rest of our lives. Once you've had a life sentence, you know they've basically got you, sort of thing. You know. So what did you get in eighteen? Yeah. How was that feeling? Even though it's a big sentence, were you relieved not to be doing a thing? I was relieved. Thirty-five. I was relieved, mm. but it it was about to hit me later on. Like, you know, about you know, a few weeks later, about to hit me. You know, the, the, the enormity of it. You know, and what I, and what I, and what I was about to face at that age. What jail did you go to? So I started off then in the, in the scrubs, and that's where I was, fuck it had lots of fights. You know what I mean? And um, like in my book, I say you know like some of these are great big men, and you know like, and I could not take a step backwards because I was being fucked. I knew that. And there's like a guy in there, Bobby Bill. Like he was like, a very well known guy from the. I was having it with him for a little while, and um, we were the, we were the category A's on the just on this landing, just just us, you know. And that's where I met. That's where I met Frankie Fraser. I met. Uh, what was he like? By then he's quite old, you know what I mean. But he still had his principles, highest principles, you know. So uh, I, I, that's where I met that Nielsen. Who's he? You know, that Dennis Nielsen. You know that one. The um, who killed them thirteen? You know, an absolutely cowardly killer. He killed them thirteen men. You know, so he killed 13 guys. He's one of those the serial killers in this country, you know. He was an ex-policeman. And then he's worked down in the job centre in Kentish Town. But he, he was bringing gay men back to his house up in Muswell Hill and then dr dr drugging them up and that and then throttling them and then chopping their bodies up, boiling them. And it's only the neighbours going, there's a terrible stench coming through this. That was how they caught him. Now this guy is sat from here to where that wall is over there on this table I was sat on, and I was I wasn't having it, you know. So I just said to him, I said, "Get off this fucking table!" You know, I, I was literally going to launch myself at him, you know. And uh, he moved off the table, and I was there with some lovely guys, uh, the jock guy, the bear, they call him. Um, and he used to give you, like, if you wanted, they give you Valium in the morning. So I was, like, some of us got like, have a little top of that, and all sit there playing cards. You know what I mean? That's why he wasn't going to ever sit on my work at the table I was sat on, you know. And I was there for about, I don't know, maybe nine months. And then they moved me to Gartree, maximum security prison. You know, maximum security prison. And um, 
And that's when it began. That's you know, and that's when my education and that begun. In what sense? You know, to become what I eventually did in a, in a criminal sense. You know what I mean? You know, because as soon as I got there, I was very very fortunate that I met up with like like Sidney Draper. He was up. He'd been up in Berlin, Berlin, and all that. Because he got nicked up in Scotland for having a bit of work, you know. And um, he's a very seasoned armed robber. And when you, uh, you get these comments, people go, "Well, they're going out there, really great armed robbers." Well, they couldn't have been if they was in jail. What they might not realise is they might have had loads of other bits of work and this, that, the other. You know, you know. So you don't just judge it by, you know, the, that the person's present circumstances. You know. Uh, some people would take used to would, would, would take the sentence to fucking be able to cover whatever you, you know, um, but yeah. So I met these guys. They were top of the tree people. You know what I mean? Um, Dave Bell, City Draper, John Massey. He's on another wing. Uh, yeah, John Massey had a big reputation there. Where was Massey from? He's from London, out of Kentish Town. London? Yeah, he was yeah. Paul Ferris's friend. That's right, yeah. Yeah, John Massey. So I met Paul Ferris years later when I was in when I was in Spain. You know, when I came towards the end of my sentence. I, I, I um, but we, it was a bit further down the line, you know. Um, and but So when I'm in Gartry, I'm with these guys, it's fucking amazing. I'm with, like, you know, Stan Thompson. He'd escaped out of the Wendy house years ago with... That Jeremy Chewett, the IRA guy, and they put him back in there, and he was the he was the other the other guy. There were six of us, and then above us there was six other cells, and that's where they put the women terrorists, you know. And I was going to myself, "Fuck me, you're in, you're in big trouble here. If I'm there with these guys, the only guys, you know, what I mean, whatever they thought of me, then, you know, to put me up with them type of people, you know." Um, How has that been run? <clears throat> being around serial killers. I was never wrapped around you. I wouldn't be wrapped around him. The guy who'd done the 13 bodies there. Yeah, that's what that's Tal he, he, The Italian guy who'd killed 80 or 100 people. Yeah, but again, with him, it was slightly different because he, he was an Italian guy. And I'm telling you, I think if there was 100 girls stood there, 99 of them would be fucking falling over for him. You know what I mean? He's a fucking great looking guy. He's a, he was like, he was a political terrorist sort of thing. You know what I mean? You know, um, so I didn't look at it. I didn't look at him like that almost. You gotta say I'm like that guy. But everything to me is like, wow, we've been so every, just everything all the time, you know what I mean? Because of the circumstances I'd i was in the deepest end you can go. Why though? If it was uh Because whatever they thought of me in their um in their, you know when I mean, they watched you over a certain period of time, they went, we're gonna well, he's gotta go they so they put me in there. What age were you then? Twenty two or twenty three? Well I was twenty yeah, twenty three. I'm still only a kid, then at yeah, that age. Exactly. You're a man, but a kid, sort of thing. And I've been in boarding school, and I've been in fucking in the army, so I never experienced what most people experience in life. I mean, that's why I'm a bit odd in all them respects, you know. Many prisons were you in? I was in a few. Um, Gartry is where I organised the hit. Well, it was my idea for the helicopter escape, which happened, and it was a successful escape. You can actually see it on YouTube. Um, this guy, Johnny Kendall, he arrived at the jail and he'd already been took off of the security van, you know, and he arrives and um, he had it with me. And it, no one in that fucking jail would ever thought the way I think, do you understand? So no, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I would be going, we, like, we have helicopter here, do you know what I mean? So when he sat down with Johnny Kendall, I'm telling him, we can do this. You can only have it with certain people, you know? And... He was fucking double serious. He actually had a person who was prepared to hijack a fucking helicopter, helicopter pilot, you know what I mean? When he was up in mid-flight. And those details there, I wasn't myself privy to, to some of it because I was on a different wing. But every, every single part of that plan was my fucking, was, was my detail. Certain other details that happened afterwards would be down to Sid and Johnny Kendall and that, you know. But up until that point, I planned all that, which was fucking brilliant. And I was meant to be on it myself. So the space is for three people and only two got on it because I was meant to be the third one. Why did you not go on it? I fucking got a visit out of the blue. And, and he can't tell me that it's today, Johnny Kendall. He passed me. 
and and there's between me and him, and he's on the hot, even he's on now. I'm just on the category. He's on this right with all the stripes and everything. So you've got all the dogs and everything, things like that. And he's saying to me, "Are you going to be out this afternoon?" He's that the other. And I was going, "No, no, no." And in hindsight, well, I should have seen the change in his face or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like almost like fuck me. But and obviously, it fucking, I was really fucking pissed off about it. To be honest with you, you know. And I like later on, I was really happy, but I should have had my car marked to have said it you know what I mean and when I saw him Johnny Kendall uh, years later in that in, in my uh, um, Freddie Foreman's uh, son's place Greg he's, he, he owned the place and I seen him I said what the fuck happened here John that's the first time I've seen him and then the last time I saw him why the fuck didn't you mark my card do you know what I mean you know but because he's such a nice geezer I'm not going to go take it any further than that but I was really pissed off about it you know what about the, the guys who got away when did they get caught so I said he got caught, he lasted out the longest. And then, and Johnny Kendall, you see, he was a burglar. He was never like, he wasn't like, uh, like a major cook or villain, you know what I mean? You Why know? did they want to escape? How long was he doing? So he got took out on a van a, f a few months before with a guy called Terry Smith. His book, I'm written in his book, you know what I mean? Terry Smith was a very well known armed robber, you know what I mean? And top guy. And um, I was written about in his book. And uh, when, they're, when they're taking, moving Terry Smith from Maidstone Prison, he's got a firm that's going to take him off the fucking security, off, off the prison van. You know what I mean? They're going to they're gonna stop this van like it's a fucking, you know, like a, a, a bit of work. You know what I mean? And he's handcuffed to that Johnny Kendall. It's a lot that Johnny Kendall handcuffed to him. You know what I mean? And, he's, and just as it's about to happen, he says, you're coming with me. And he was only doing seven years at the time. And um, all of a sudden now he's living the fucking life. They're living next door to uh, Paul Yates and at Bob Geldof down in Chelsea, them two. Did they not go to the UK? No, no, no. They, they were living down there. That because that was on the that was on the uh, the Maidstone escape, which happened just to, uh, just prior to that, you know. So he's literally he wants out big time, and he's met this guy in Wandsworth, who fucking he's right impressed by him and he wants it and you get this great camaraderie with some of these guys that you meet in these jails you know they're like some blinding people you know you've obviously you've interviewed quite a few of them you know mm. and they're some right characters you know um and he had this guy uh, who's prepared to do it for him and um i remember hearing this like doom, 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 doom. Uh, they went bomb i got moved i got moved up to uh franklin over there over that, they knew it was, they knew I was involved in it. So the police, and um, uh, I've got to tell the viewers that he's got nothing on underneath. He's just got this little frock on. <laughs> 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 As I bent down from my wall, oh dear me! <laughs> Mother said there'd be days like this. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. Um, yeah, and I went up there and fuck me, that's completely different, you know. But, and that's why I was up there with Johnny, uh, 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 Johnny Newham. Um, um, who else like Terry Smith? I was out there with him, big Billy Adams, um, Kenny Noy. Kenny Noy was my badminton partner. He, you know, he's the one who Yeah, done the coppers in yeah. the garden. And then the uh, and then the, with, with, with the geezer who was the kung fu fucking champion. Yeah, and the, yeah, uh, yeah people don't know that he was a kung fu champion. Now I'm not saying one minute what he done ever uh, uh, was right or wrong. With the one in the um in the uh, in his own property, that wasn't the policeman that came at him. That was like someone who had a combat jacket on a fucking hood on, you know what I mean? Looked like it was coming to fucking rob him. Yeah, that's mad too. And good. ever since then, <clears throat> on bit, on, when they do real heavy duty surveillance now, well, they will use special forces now. They second them for six months. And they can get as close to you as like a fucking, uh, you know, a dustbin outside your fucking house. Yeah, they know everything, especially with the yeah. intelligence and mm -hmm. all this stuff nowadays with bugs and... They can fucking That's why I eventually got out of it, James. That's why yeah. I eventually got out of it. So you, where did you end up doing 12 years? I was up there, and again, beautiful guys. And um, without them guys, my time would have been even fucking hard. If I, were, you know, if I didn't know some of these lovely, met some of these lovely people. And it was up there that I met Alan Lord. He was the one. Manchester, the Manchester riots. Thing. Yeah, well, up there, I was up there with him, and he used to come and say hello to us and everything. Because up there in London, it was just, you know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. that's probably why everyone fucking hated each other. You know I mean? But it just, I don't know why. You know what I mean? A lot of these guys was in there, 
they had a lot of money tucked away. You know what I mean? That, so when they're up there living fucking very well, you know. What was it like getting out? Fucking amazing. Did you have to do your courses and that? No, what I've done, first of all, I, they, when they sent me to the Mount, I, uh, I never come back from there. I went on the run. I went on the run for um, about 12 months, 14 months. Why? Because I'd read some psychology books and that, and I knew that from seven years onwards, your mind would start to deteriorate. It, with some, very quickly, and others, you know, just could be like a mild corrosion. And I knew that I had to, you know what I mean? I'm fucking 22, I think, you know, you know, I hadn't been up to the crease that many times in life, you know what I mean, with the birds. <laughs> you know, stepped up to the wicket. And then I fucking, and I went into this pub once, and this fucking, of course she was fucking something else. And we was like, she came into the pub, into the toilet with me, you know, fucking, I'm like, that. Jesus Christ. And I just thought, I'm not going back. So I went on my toes, and that's where I eventually met my daughter's uh, mum at, at that time. Well, we tried, I was up living in Spain. Do you know a guy called Neil Robinson? Famous Scotch guy. No. Yeah. And that's where I met him. So I, when I went on my toes and I, and it came, they would try to get me two or three times, the police. You know what I mean? So that's when I went, fuck it. How long were you into your sentence when you were on the run? About 10 years I've done. So you were getting out, what, once a week? No, Monday every day. Friday, Monday to Friday? Every day. <clears throat> yeah. Brilliant, it was. But that was the problem. It was like, and you know, and you look as fit and healthy as everything, but nowhere to go, no fucking thing, you know what I mean? You were must you, understand, I had a very limited network of people because I've gone in when I'm very young, I've just come out of the army, I don't, I don't really have what one would call close friends. I know so many people, there's so many people who know me, but, you know, because of the way my life has been, you know. Uh, so you've just done a 10 stretch, you were getting home leaves, you were starting to get out. No, yeah, was, yeah. Was it fear? What is that to make you then want to go on the run when you're getting out in a year because or two? Because I wanted fucking to have another drink. I wanted to fucking see dark night skies. I wanted to see the fucking stars. But you I were, wanted to stand out in the rain. You were getting out though in a year or two. What was that? Was that fear of getting out and not, ha not having fuck or what was it? I just, what it was, uh, you know when you go to jail, whatever, you, you've got to be able to have a mechanism to switch off from the street thinking of outside. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you just won't, you know, you just keep thinking about it, you'll go up the wall, you know. And and I just, you know, I just fucking, I'd had, I'd, I'd had enough. I'd had enough time. I'd, I'd had enough time at that point. I literally, literally had, you know. Where did you get caught? Coming back from Spain, I got at Heathrow. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get added on to your sentence? In my absence, uh, when I, so I, I, I got done, with, so whilst I was on the run, and that's why I had to go uh, uh, thing, I got, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I said it was like 400 kilos of puff in this garage. And I got arrested by customs and excise. So I've been arrested by the lot. And when you get arrested by customs and excise, they're a completely different breed to all the other ones you ever hear about. They really are different, you know. So uh, what were you doing? Were you over in Spain? Shipping puff? No, I wasn't. I was over in Spain... But that's not when I, where it is, I don't go on my toes in. I get, all this happens to me before I go out there, you see? You get me? Yeah. Did you ever come across Ricky Hayes? No. He used to do the puff over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was with all the major people out there as well, you know. It's next level there, Europe. Yeah. I was, I, I was at, that's where I was at with that, that Neil Robinson. Uh, oh, was he Scottish? Yeah. And he fucking had his great big fucking ass. He was the next one down from Ronnie Knight. What a beautiful man he was, I'm telling you. Amazing. You know, we'd have like fucking Tommy Cooper turn up there, fucking uh, all these celebrities and all that. You know what I mean? He was the most beautiful guy. And that's where I met, uh, that's where I met him, you know. So what did you do then? So when you were on the run, started doing puff? So when I was on, so when I was on, uh, yeah, I was on my toes and that. And I got done for, um, I used to mix with my friends in the afternoons and that, and then in, and then in, in late afternoon I'd have to go back to this fucking house I was staying in, uh, in Downham Road. This is a classic, this one. So I used to go to this pub, have a couple of like drinks, like whiskeys or whatever, just to fucking knock me out, basically. And when I went into this pub, these three geese, one of them said to me, who the fuck are you looking at? And I just walked into the pub, you know. And I went like, what do you mean? He said, who the fuck are you looking at? Well, if you fucking feel like that, we'll come outside. 
He came out, his brother come out, and another guy come out. And luckily I had a pen on me that had a, uh, a scalpel on it. And um, as I was going out the door, they should have jumped me from fucking behind. You know, this this phase, you never go out first. When, you know, I just got the top of it, this, that, the other. And because I was a fencing champion, so I left fucking two of them. You know what I mean? Their clothes were like fucking in, in pieces, tatters, you know. Tea bag. You know, you know what I mean? But I didn't fucking cut them open, though. Two days later, it's alleged it was me, but a guy shows up at the pub with a gun and holds fucking the whole pub up. Right, and gets them all lined up and going, where are these fucking geezers? You know what I mean? Uh, you know that with that, with that incident or whatever. I, I, and I was in the pub. You know what I mean? And um, and this guy come in, old old boy came in. You know what I mean? He fucking, he said, there's about fucking hundred policemen. They've got snipers, they've got everything out there. Boom, boom, boom. Because someone's rung up and said, there's a man in here. He's got a gun. He's fucking pointing at everyone. You know what I mean? He's fucking wants to know where these pe people are. You know. Anyway, I. Walked out the pub, and I chucked the right, and as I got over the first bit of a road, this little squad come on me, and they kicked me from behind, right in the back, boom, like that fucking thing. I hit the fucking floor, and I start spinning me around, going, where's that fucking gun, where's that gun? And I said, what the hell are you on about? I don't know. And then one of them shouted out, found it! And I said, I found the gun. And that was found, that was found in the toilet urinal. And then, so they nicked me, and then they gave me, in 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 the station, they go, you the fucking used that on us. I was going, what the fucking are you on about? Because I don't even know what you're on about, you know. So they they nicked me for it, and they put me in Pentonville prison. That was on a Friday, and this big black guy come in into in, in the cell with me. You know what I mean? And he pulls out a great big fucking bag of puff. He's going, we're going to be all right every weekend. Also, 15 minutes into eating, uh, they go, Brown coming out, all the dogs are safe. They go, we can't have you in this prison. You, you know what I mean? We've been sold. So they put me down in the block all fucking weekend. And then they moved me to um, Belmarsh, top security, maximum security there. What was that like? Fucking horrible. Why? Because I never had no contact with anyone from that moment onwards, like physical contact with, uh, you know. I was putting high security, weren't I? So like when Karen would come up and see me, it's fucking behind glass. Did you get an add on to your sentence? Eventually, when I, yeah, when I get a, when I when they arrest me because it's all in the book. When they arrest me at, at Heathrow, that's when they bring me back. You know, bring me back. Yeah, and um, so I'm, I'm in. So I'm in, and that's when I meet Johnny Reed. Have you heard of Johnny Reed out of, out of Bermondsey? Fucking beautiful, famous mm. guy. Because uh, uh, right, more about Bermondsey of a uh, top, top. There used to be top arm robbers out uh, for a moment. Proper success. Successful guys, you know, rookie league, all that crowd, you know. I mean, some, if I, I'd never, without my scent, if I don't, with, with like with Jeffrey Patrick, Peter Pasito and all that, it, I wouldn't have got through it. It'd be much harder for me to get through it, do you know what I mean? The sentence and that. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm having a, um, you know, it was amazing. When I out in Spain, fucking amazing. They sent me, they said, they give me a photo. It says, this is the guy's dad. And he said, he's fucked off with like, I think it's 450 grand. He said, uh, can you go and get it back? Well, you've got to be careful, though, because he carries knives, he can be very dangerous and that. But we have, like, we've got to move right on from whatever. Let me finish off that story with the pub. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so they nicked me for that. And um, so I'm nicked for that. And then, then nicked for the importation at Portsmouth. So when they take me down to Portsmouth, they clear the court completely out. I had to go in in bare feet. And the whole... It's all full up with great big fucking, and, and you know, like the plainclothes police officers and that. And I go and get, I go and get six months for, and, and I lose the 25 grand assurity, because that's what it stuck up for me for Bell, and um, and two years for importation. The others, one of them got five years, one got six years. Neil, Neil Robertson's sister. That was in her garage, 400 key. And I said, I didn't know fucking nothing about it. You know what I mean? Um, and, um, yeah. And so that went on. So I get nicked for that. Boom. But by now, I'm in a relationship with this beautiful, beautiful girl, Karen. And, uh, and when I come out, my life was fucking, it started to just get better and better over a period of time. Like, you know, and then I'm, um, you know, I'm fucking 
I'm, I'm at it, you know, beautifully. You know, I had, I had the biggest bit of work in my life that after that, that's my World Cup. You know what I mean? Fucking amazing. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, after that, it just went on and on. And then, then, then as I say, I'm in, that, I'm in the whole fucking world of gangsters. I've been shot at and fucking everything else. You know what I mean? That fucking, that was quite, quite a moment. They were shitting at you. I, I, I don't want to say, obviously, but you know what I, mean? I don't even think they knew it was me. I just was in, I was just in this malaise of fucking, you know, people shooting the fucking car. Two other people got shot. You know, and I'm fucking like, wow. So, see, when you came out, were you straight back into crime? Kind of. Would you? I was a great footballer, you see. I could have been, you know what I mean? Like, Did you ever go like, back to prison when you came out? Never went back to prison, <clears throat> ever. And I, and I, and I was, you know what I mean? I was at it, and I, you know, and, and I've, had, I've, I've been all around the world, and I've police, police forces follow me in Australia, America, South Africa, Europe. They'll be following you till the day you die. Oh, yeah. Sake. Yeah. Category A, killed a, killed a security guy. Yeah. Think he's done actually... for puff, yeah. escape attempt. Yeah. Yeah, you're fucked. James, a boy. <laughs> <laughs> you better stay in here today. Is uh... <laughs> So, you try and get your life sorted. How did you end up becoming bodyguards to Amy Winehouse? So, I've always look after myself. As I said, I started doing judo when I was seven. So, you could handle yourself then? Yeah. But he would not know that the way I, the way I could properly handle myself until I went to prison. People test you. Yeah, yeah, I fucking lots of fights. You know what I mean? And a lot of them was on the football pitch. But ninety nine percent of people can't fight. No, that's correct. Human beings, they think that they can fight four times better than what they actually can. Yeah. Human beings can't even. Majority of men can't even throw a punch. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got any sort of training, any sort of combat training, whether it's a few well, months, few years, say, you're always going to go ahead of the game. All you're delivering is like, all you need to deliver is fucking four or five, you know, stone of kinetic fucking energy to take anyone down. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You know, uh, but as it's delivering it and having the balls to, because punch bags don't hit back. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, but so I, I, so I've done that. And what it was, and because of my... The life that I was that, that I had, which was an amazing, beautiful life, and and when I wanted to get out of that world, uh, and my beautiful daughter Polly, and then you know the, and Rachel Rita and my beautiful son Dal, um, I just wanted to be out of that world. You know what I mean? So you had four kids. Well, I got my daughter, and then my and and, uh, and the other one, and uh, and I um, and it just you know it's just a responsibility that I felt that I uh, I didn't want old Bill kicking their doors down, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sorry, kicking their doors down. And um, and so I gave up that, I gave up that life. But I, uh, you know, I, you know, I, you know I, I'd lasted like fucking 15 years in that world, up and down the country, you know what I mean? Like from fucking everywhere, you know, it was beautiful, a most beautiful time. What do you, you know, what do you think when you see banks in that now? Do you think you could still get that score? Or I always think, I swear to God, yeah. Sometimes I don't, I, I like, purely, you know, theoretically, in my mind, you know what I mean, like be going boom, 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 you know. How, but again, obviously nowadays it, it's not as easy as a thing. The only way you can have a proper bit of work is inside information. The problem with that is, is that you always, run, you always run the danger of that person who give it to you. They couldn't stand up. And 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they never have. You know, in the, in the Brinks mat, the black, he fucking, the guard, he, he, he couldn't handle the pressure because it's massive when it comes on you. They go, these are seasoned proper old bill. They're proper, you know what I mean? You don't understand what it's like. They are fucking. If you're getting a 25 ram down your throat, people's asses go, and you're talking major players well, in the game as well. Yeah, never but mind. how they do it is they'll nick your mum. Yeah, of course. They'll nick your fucking mm. girlfriend. They'll yeah. put them fucking through. And you know, if ever you've been... See, with me, the unlucky thing with me was is that when they get the 18 years, that's very unusual because a lot of guys, they'll go and get a seven the first time and then they'll refine what they've done and they'll go at it again for it. You, know, you know, it might be un very... Un you know what I mean? I've got the 18 years, so it... I was, you know what I mean? It's like I'm starting everything very late in my life. You know what I mean? You know. So how did you end up bodyguard Amy Winehouse? She asked me to be. She asked me to be a bodyguard, but I was like a um, like a shadow guard. You know what I mean? Like like me, I rely on speed. You know what I mean? I fucking that's what I do. You know, I've had some fucking amazing tear ups. You know, I uh, wanted like about three years ago. These um fucking four great big lumps they were coming to the pub. I used to drinking. 
And I started in there on, he was on, on, on the governor there, you know, and uh, some other people were eating them. And um, it, was a, it was a big foot, some football competition, the last one or whatever, you know what I mean? There were ripples in there of people trying to get out of the way and all that. And um, they, lifted the, they lifted the governor up. The, the food. He was the area manager. Bring him outside to fucking try and hurt him. And um, I hit him once. He's about 18, 19 stone. Fucking about six foot two. And they were still scraping him up off the fucking floor, you know. And uh, everyone saw, everyone was there saw it, you know what I mean? And I was fucking ready with the others as well. And uh, I didn't want to know. And I think you get that extra energy and that extra thing when you're doing something right, you know what I mean? Even more so, you know. Mm -hmm. So I can have it, you know, and what it is, but when you're doing that sort of work, because I, like, I, I also with Pete Doherty and Noel Field and, you know, is, is, is it, the skill of it is seeing things before it happens, you know, you know what I mean? So you, so you turn left, then go right. If there's no, you know, if ever, do you understand? Mm -hmm. It's seeing it before it happens. If you're going to see danger before it happens, you're going to fucking, you get there before that happens, you know. What was Emma being host like? Brilliant. It's the most amazing girl. So down to work, and she's a beautiful looking girl. And um, she had some cracking mates wrapped around her, you know. I mean, one of the greatest, I think, personally, uh, documentaries we've made about her was the one of like reclaiming Amy. Because those girls and that, they literally were her closest friends, you know what I mean? And um, I sit up in that, uh, up in that, uh, that little flat up there, you know, with all the lads, you know. Uh, it was brilliant times back then, you know, that was the indie world. You know, no fielding, you know. Uh, sex, drugs and rock and roll. Sex, drugs it? and rock and roll, baby, it was, you know what I mean? You know, and for me, you know, there's even a little bit of female Doc Martin left for me at the end of the year. <laughs> I did I end up looking after fucking, I remember looking after this Norwegian guy and everything, and he was a little bit thing. He bought me a watch for fucking six grand, right? Opposite Selfridges in there, I'll never forget it, in there, uh, him and this uh, thing. They hired the whole top floor of this hotel, and, um, they get brasses and all that, you know what I mean? And the geezer who's paid for it, he's the only one who ain't got a room to sit in uh, to, bring, to bring a bird into or anything. He's going, Jimmy, I think there's something wrong here, James, you know what I mean? Like that. And I was going to myself, I don't know, you know what I mean? You know. So I'd done all that, I said, you know what I mean? And what it was like to get out of to get out of the world that I, you know, which I loved it and loved the people, just amazing fucking people and everything, you know what I mean? But I, you know, I just wanted, it just felt I just wanted to do, you know what I mean? And you can't. You can't, that other world, you've got to be switched on 20 fucking 4 7. And if there's any other numbers more, so you've got to literally, as soon as I go out the door, even when I was in my house, I used to think it was, I was being bugged, it was on me, you know. Mm. But, and, and it ain't like, you know, this is not, you know, you're not living a character or something. You're fucking living that life. That's, this is it, this is your life. Mm -hmm. And forevermore, it's your life, you know. What's your biggest regret, James? Starting out robbing banks. Do you know what I mean? Because then, obviously, like I, I became a poet, and uh, like later like, on in life, you know what I mean. That's that's a career I I, I do now as well, you know. But um, the point is, like, it's it's trying to live a full life, trying to do the right thing. I'm very, very, I'm very proud of my army record. I'm very proud of my prison record. I fucking oh, I've done the right fucking thing. You know what I mean? You know, and I'm um. Been very lucky to be wrapped around good people, you know. And, um, but it's been a very violent at times, you know what I mean? Like club life, I was involved with people who owned lots of clubs in London, you know, and um, that was an amazing time. You know, I used to just leave my car, park my car outside the club, right in the West End, yeah. Go on there, boys, to the, to the uh, Dortmund, there, I'll take that. They go, all right, nice one, boom. Go and pick it up six in the morning, fucking off my nuts, you know. Uh, people I met, you know, I'd go, that, What's his name? Lee, he used to play for Leeds and all that. Lee Chapman. I went to his private club and uh, used to meet all the top stars there. You know, I was like, again, in my book about, you know, uh, Mick Up and all, fuck, the whole lot in there, you know what I mean? They were like, wow. You know, I was, I was tame. I was tame by then. Not that I was ever wild. I'm not a violent person. James, you see, you're not wild. You've stabbed guys, fucking killed yeah. guys, fucking yeah, robbery that. attempts. Yeah, I know that. But what I'm trying to say to you is, <laughs> I know it sounds ironic and, and this, that, and the other, but I'll, how could I ever be wrapped around the people I am to this day? You know what I mean? If 
Because violence and that is an anathema to these people. Do you understand? Mm. They don't want it back. Man. I mean, I will do all right, whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? In in the worlds I was in, except obviously for the the shooting of the guard, um, I wasn't living in other worlds of other people. You know what I mean? I, you know, I, I I wasn't ever getting on public transport. You know what I mean? I mean, I was tooled up for fucking, you know, fourteen fucking years. Never shot anyone. And I, had, and I had all the fucking bits of work on me. Because once I'd been shot at that time, I thought, fuck it. I'm going to make sure I'm fucking properly tooled up now. You know what I mean? You know. How does it heighten your paranoia, being in that life? That done me, uh, like, at the end it done me. You don't realise that at the time. But, um, yeah, it, 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 what it does, it with, doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on or what it is, that, the other, it minimally takes its toll and... It can break her. It never broke me, but it can. What age are you now? I'm coming up to 64. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's all just beginning. You know? And, um, are you still partying now? No. No, I couldn't. Can't. I, I, in my mind, if I'd love to, but I couldn't. You know what I mean? But I still have a drink. Last night before I, you know, because I was really, really happy and excited to come and do this show with you. And so I'm with uh, some friends in the... Um, in the, in the pub and I had a couple of whiskeys and all that, just to take the edge off me, you know what I mean? Because, <laughs> yeah, nice, you know what I mean? Yeah. Normally I wouldn't do that, so I thought, yeah, in fear, I must do that, you know? Um, the key to, the key to this life is, you know what I mean, having, having good people, make sure you do the right thing yourself, you know, how you perceive it to be right. That doesn't mean, like, that you're a, a sociopath or a psychopath or, or whatever. I mean, a sociopath, that's someone who just breaks the, breaks the, mm. breaks the rules, you know what I mean, you know? How was it writing your book, James? I loved it. For me, it wasn't a cathartic thing to do. It's because I've done so many things. And what it is, it's the, the juxtaposition of, you know, like that boarding school thing then to Parkhurst to, you know what I mean? It's not, not normal. It's just, you know what I mean? You know, every, it, there's more, there's better people that have done and been more successful at me at say Robin Banks or this, that, 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 that. But there's no one on this planet who's gone across the board of everything I've done. Nobody. Do you know what I mean? You know, they wouldn't have got the opportunities. They might have been able to, maybe, but, you know, they wouldn't have got the opportunities. And there's no such thing as, like, it's opportunity and seizing it. You know? What happens when the coppers broke your leg? Yeah, that fuck hours with Noel Fielding. Yeah, Sunday, that was Easter Sunday morning. Oh, that was 10 o'clock in the morning. And um, he was going through his, um, he was going through his blonde moment at that time, you know what I mean? He had blonde fucking hair. And we're walking down... We was at, we'd been at his, at his house up in the top of Kentish Town. And um, uh, as we were going out to get some, I, I was going to get some cigarettes from Far Cop. We were going to get some bits and pieces. He was going home. And as we're going towards the shop, the police start pulling up. And again, I just think the adrenaline in them when they see him, you know what I mean? Uh, I just got a bit excited. And as I go into the shop, I get hit from behind. And then I fucking felt my nose being dragged and pulled around like that. And before I could do anything, I became, I was un became unconscious. The next thing I remember is I was being picked up and pulled, half lifted and dragged out of the shop and f sat down next to an old fielding. And they got him in a pair of dungarees that around his fucking thing here, you know what I mean? So he's just got his fucking underpants on and, uh, and et cetera, whatever. I think they're underpants. No, I'm joking. Um, but, uh, man, I treated him really badly, you know what I mean? And, um, that took me five years to win that case. You know what I mean? I'll take it, you know what I mean? Try to fit me up with a bit of gear. You know what I mean? That was completely different to the other raps what I took out of the house. Because I'm with celebrities and people, they go through the bins and everything. You know what I mean? What, what I said. And again, you don't win them cases unless, that's why I believe in the judicial system, believe it or not. You know what I mean? You don't say it wrong. You're going to get fucking done for it. You know what I mean? But... Only um, like like who I was with, like the Bourbon Six and Guildford Four, when I was away with them, um, you know, they did, they, they, they were fitted up. Uh, I was away with him. What's his name? Bronson, Charles Bronson. I used, to, I knew him as Mickey Peterson. Yeah, how was Charles? Yeah, yeah. And when I was away with, him, I was away with. Him, that's why I was, I was in Belmarsh with him, wasn't I? And he go, he go, he go, you eat. He go, I got a nice cup of tea. Uh, thing. He said, do you want to have a cup of tea? And I was like that. I was thinking, so fuck me, man. I've got enough problems on my own fucking thing without being associated with you, you know what I mean? Because he was a fucking lunatic, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then on the other thing here, there's a great big black geezer, and he was Meteoron's 
bodyguard, but he chopped two people up fucking God knows wherever, and he's fucking next to me on his side, and he's trying to be pally with me, and I'm going, get me fucking out of here. <coughs> and they eventually moved me from there <coughs> because they take me on an ID parade for that, for the um, down and road thing, you know, with the, with the, it was the alleged gunman, the other saying I'm the gunman. So they take me to the ID parade and, and, and everyone else, right, has got hair and I'm the only bald guy there. They go, what the fuck's going on here? You're not going to believe what they've done. We all had to wear wigs, right? Big curly wigs like that. And you have a mirror like that so you can't see. And all I can see myself in is this big curly wig and I'm going, if this carpet, no wonder why you can't understand why I wrote a book because you could, just couldn't get any more fucking surreal with what's going on here. And um, the witnesses from the pub are, are, are going to come. One of them, one of them was a, a special forces soldier. He fucked off to Australia, right? The other witness don't show up, and then one witness shows up, and he positively says that I am not the gunman, and, and as he's going along and everything. And then when. Afterwards, there's a policeman there with brave stamping his feet, going, it shouldn't be allowed, this, that, and I well, I didn't understand what was happening. But um, I, didn't, I didn't get picked out, so they can't charge me uh, for that now. So they now got to take me off that high security in Belmarsh to, and then to move me to Maidstone, which I would, I would dearly want to go to in the first fucking place, you know what I mean? Because I was told it was a really nice place to be. It wasn't, really, you know what I mean? But you know, Who's left now? I was being, you know, I, I, listen, I've had me ups and downs, you know what I mean? I, I, and I, can, get, I get, can get depressed or whatever. But I've created a life myself, you know what I mean? I've made fucking things happen, you know what I mean? And again, you know, it's, it's a fact, uh, I think uh, uh, Kent said it, that uh, you'll only ever be as happy as your, uh, ha as your happiest child. Do you know what I mean? Do you understand by what I mean by that, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, I think that everyone should, you know what I mean? That it doesn't get easier. What it is is that you have to go over these hurdles in life and then just enjoy the flats and then get ready for the fucking hurdles because they will just keep coming at you. There ain't no, um, uh, there's no downtime sort of thing. You know what I mean? Don't, you know, I, I don't, I think that that's what life is. It's just, and that's why you've got to try, you know, not, not, not for frivolously enjoy sort of whatever, but you know, like enjoy this life as well. You know yeah, what I mean? and enjoy to. the things that are so important, like your family, like your close friends or whatever. You know what I mean? They're the important things in life. Where do you go forward for the future, James? Well, when I was out in America, I was with... Um, because, you, as you see a photo in there, I, I ended up in a band with... Um, they put my poems to their music, and one of them's just got his second Grammy Award, uh, Leadfoot. Uh, Smarty Smith, he's, he's famous. He was the only Essex boy in the Warhol factory. And there's a photo of me sat down with the guys, and they're about to, and they're about to, um, and we're looking at doing, um, they're going to make a film of me. They were make, make, make a film of my life and that. And they wrote MASH, Cheers, uh, Suits. They've got the names in there. You see her somewhere. That's my mum, God bless her. And she, imagine it. Well, once when I gave her a thousand pounds, she nearly fucking fainted because she's just not used to that, you see. It's in there somewhere. But, uh, but the whole point is, I've, I've got all them photos in there and the whole thing. Every, anything I've ever said, people are still alive. Do you understand? Do you know what I mean? So, okay, no. you know, I know, you know what I mean? So, you would never ever come. I know some people are coming here. They stretch some of the truth to fucking unbelievability. You yeah, know? the majority of them do. I'm not that. They do, don't they? Do you know what I mean? I know a lot of people as well when they like, I've filled in with a lot of shit. Instead of just like fucking sticking to what they've done because that's, that's enough. They fucking want to, like, not just put salt and pepper on it. They're fucking, like, adding a whole new dish to it. Yeah. You I know. think people in that criminal, criminal fraternity, remember, people aren't sane in the mind, so they're trying to compete and out-compete and be better. I, I've killed five people. I've killed six. I've done 10 robberies. Well, I've yeah. done 12. Yeah, some people go, like, they killed yeah. this amount of people. Mm -hmm. and, so, and the thing is, you see, unlike a, a military guy coming here or whatever, who there's a record of what they've done and what they say. Yeah. You won't have that. The only record you'll have that I've got for myself is of my friends who now will be watching this at some point yeah. uh, soon, you know what I mean? That if any lies that I ever told, you'd be fucking handed out of town, you know what I mean? And I've got, uh, you know, I would never do that. I would never embarrass my children for starters, let alone myself. That's the one thing I think that 
that I think that everyone should try and make sure that they retain in their life, and that's and that's their self pride, because that will drag you out of so many situations and humour. You know, I mean, I said about you when um, you know, you know, it was, it was a jock, and they said, "Well, you brought out of it." One the, the, of them was telling me, and they said that you took her out, you know, for, for dinner or something, and then she went past somewhere, and she said, "That smells nice." So you took her, you took her past again, and you said, "Right, let's go home." <laughs> I know that's why I don't do uh, comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, but how's life now? It's good, man. You know what I mean. On the whole, you know, as a game, my life changed obviously because of my leg. And um, do you take anything for that? Yeah, what yeah do you so take? I take tramadol, things like that. How many you know, trammies you take a day? Six. You addicted to them? Yeah. Nice way to fly, baby. Mm -hmm. You know, you know I, I say that it's not because obviously it, it does hold you back uh, slightly. You know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like, and also like, uh, it's an observation of, of our life is changing so rapidly, so quickly, you know, that, um, you know, both for the good and for the bad, you know what I mean? You know, um, you know, there's going to be, I just don't, I, I, I don't know, but I'm not a pessimist, like, I try to be, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not a delirious optimist, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, a, I'm more of a positive person, you know, I was, you just never got through it. You know, everything I've gone through, you know, um, it's not been an easy, it's been a fucking, I've, 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 it's been hard, but I think the harder I had it, the more beautiful it, the good times were for me. Would you change anything from your past? The fucking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, like my, my boy Dale, he, he never go, he's never been to jail, he wouldn't get in trouble or anything. I go, most of the guys that I know that they're sons, they don't go to jail. Because the old man would fuck it. You know what I mean? You learn, you, you should learn, you know what I mean? You know, it's that's like, even though you get out, it's failure at the end of the day. Yeah. How tiresome is that life, James? How tiresome? Of what? What criminal life? Right? Yeah. It depends on what level you're in. It depends on what level you're in, you know what I mean? Like, um, the level I was in, you know, you're talking about MI5, um, squads coming down from Manchester on you. On me, I, I, they were fucking on me like a fucking... When I came back from Australia, after being followed everywhere there, um, they were all over me. And then, unfortunately, a few weeks later, some people I know, they all, got, well, they all get nicked. 18 years, 16 years, fucking, you know what I mean? And they've been told... You know, you know, certain things and that. So it's a very it's a difficult life. But let me say something to you. What the fuck else are you meant to do if that's, you know, all that, it's not all that one can do, but it's, it's, it's one of the ways, either that football or whatever, to get out of, uh, 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 of, of a life of... Crime. You get all, uh, yeah, it's one of the routes out of it. But the point is that you should use the money for most people. They, you know, you're seeing they're going around giving it bigger and whatever, boom, 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 instead of putting the money away and you don't try and doing something with it. But even now, it's just harder and harder and harder to do, mm -hmm. to do things. You know what I mean? For anybody watching that's maybe want to get involved in a life of crime, what advice would you have for them? Don't set out to do it ever. You know what I mean? You know, and when people go, you're like, boom, don't worry, you'll be all right, this, that, the other, just do this. I mean, you want to, you've got to say, so well, why aren't you doing it then? Well, are you give me that money for them. Do you know what I mean? And you don't want to do it yourself and you could have kept the money. You know what I mean? That just tells you in itself that, and what it is you see is this, that it's not the length of time that you do, it's that initial shock when you go to jail. You know what I mean? Getting stripped off, bollock naked. You yeah. know what I mean? You might not even have done that in front of your bird. <laughs> You know what I mean? And you're stripped by that mate, you're like, bend over, hello, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, that was another one there, yeah, this guy, he said to me, that uh, he, he, like, he, his first night, he, went, he spent it with this guy who was in there, and, he, and uh, the guy said, the guy said to him, he said, when we get the old tea, tea and the rock cake tonight, he said, we're going to play mummies and daddies. He went, for fuck's sakes. So when he said, he said, right, we're playing mummies and daddies, he said, you got the choice. So the, the young lady went, he said, all right, well, well, I'll be daddy then. He said, come over and suck mummy's cock. <laughs> There's some freaky bastards in there. Yeah, right? no. But the whole point is, is that I, I bet Reggie Cray, he wrote about me in his book. Uh, I mean, lots of characters. That was surreal the first time I ever met him. You know, you read about him in books and things like that, and you're like that. And then when you're actually there meeting and with him, and he was trying to whisper in my ear, and I'm fucking going, keep back, you know what I mean, boom, boom, boom. You know, 
and he wrote in his book he wrote about me as a paragraph it just sounded like, he, like i was old school you know i mean i'd fucked off to spain you know who's the maddest person you've ever came across <laughs> i couldn't mention their names you know what i mean they, they most certainly had never been to jail by the way um, see the thing is the people you know what i mean i don't see them no more so there'd be no point in fucking people trying to follow me now and trying to you know like think oh well, it must be him or whatever him and the point is, I've met some people, right, that are some of the, I would consider the most top, top villain uh, things. They've never been to jail. You know what I mean? Grasses. No, no, no. They're that fucking good. Because you'll see it, that a lot of the top criminals who are at it. You wouldn't even, some of you wouldn't even know they was at it. But that's you know? the ones who fly under the radar. Yeah. You know. Do you get, see when you talk, tell your story, do you get tired? No. Nah. Because I've got a million stories, it wouldn't be enough time for us, you know what I mean, to go with things, you know what I mean? It's just so many different things, you know. And like like the, the surrealness of sitting in the kitchen with like James Corden, uh, um, Chris out of Florence and the Machine, Noel Fielding and me. And like going, fuck me, man, this is unbelievable, you know. How was Russell Brand? Beautiful guy. I, I, didn't, I didn't know him, uh, uh, I met him I think once or twice, I know his dad. Uh, uh, his dad, you know what I mean? Beautiful fella. He's quite political, you know. But lovely people, you know what I mean? And when, when people come in and they, and, they, and they say things about people with no, not a shred of evidence, or not, it's that, you know, you know trying, you know. Uh, and in that, well, it's like, like once one starts, they're all fucking, you know what I mean? You know, they all start coming out of the woodwork, you know. And um, it just wasn't like that back, uh, back then. It was wild and everything like this, that, never. But there were no like major things come out of it, you know what I mean? There were no Jimmy Savile's fucking uh, uh, come out of that world, you know what I mean? You know, just beautiful music and beautiful people, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Where can people buy your book again, James? They buy it on Amazon, as I say. We'll leave the link in the description for people to get it. Yeah, so it's on Amazon, and um, it's uh, it's uh, it's James Brown, it, uh, uh, not a normal memoir. It went to number two the first time two years ago. I'd never been done a show or anything, and... Um, uh, you know what I mean so God only knows what's going to happen this time you know I mean? because you are the top man thank you brother in this world do you know what you I mean the, and I must be honest with James you I and mean, he's not being like guy I was with a, 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 another guy and I won't mention his name because I don't think it's right on different things to you know whatever but you are man do you know what I mean and when people was going like wow wow you won't even realise the people who go like that, that look at you and go fucking hell are you going like, have you? you know what I mean so it's great what you've done yourself Appreciate it really that. is because, you know, when no one gives you nothing, you say it and you do it, you know what I mean? And like, and obviously they're going like that. I mean, obviously I'm not gay, anybody should have a good look, any answers, fucking right, sensible questions and all that. You have hit the fucking top, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you have, you know what I mean? It's brilliant, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know? I will, we do, man. It's a good yeah. laugh and hearing mad stories and... The people you must have met, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, a hell of a lot more than I would have done that, do you know what I mean? Because of, because of what you've done, you know? Mm -hmm. And again, in, in, within that, you do have to sieve out the those who are much more you know they've got proof yeah you're going to get the Walter Matties though yeah but then when they come on and they say things you've got to get you know what I mean go well where's the photos where's the thing yeah. can you have you got someone who I could ring up to verify that or vouch for you you know what mm. I mean you know they come on and go like this that the other well and if you can't get someone to do that don't say it yeah but I think the UK public can see through they the do. whole shit. We they don't, do. we don't yeah. take stuff that no. feels lightly. We, no, not at all. You go, mm. and some stories are that actual fucking mad that people genuinely think they're fake, and the other ones it's real. It's the ones where people elaborate on certain things. Yeah. And I already know what happened, but yeah. it's not my job. I don't, if I challenge and press, what happens is they'll then shut off. Yeah. It's a dead interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, 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 so yeah. If they want to bullshit, tell lies, yeah. you will be found out. Found out, yeah. yeah. It'd be on your head, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Down yeah. To you. yeah, yeah. I'll there. give you the rope. You want to hang yourself? Yeah, it's down Boom. to you, yeah. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. um, How are you feeling today? Great, as I said, you know what I mean? Uh, for me, I, when, I, when I do anything, I like get right up, you know, and I'll right prepare myself. <laughs> blah, 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 a few you know. drama, though. Well, it's not that. It's like, so I did have a look at a couple of things that you've done, you know, mm -hmm. just a couple of bits and pieces. Just have a look, you know what I mean? Yeah, Bob, yeah. So I'm not, it's nothing. When I went to do the trial, I put on a, I put on, I think it was the crown or something, just had it continuously on the TV so that it wouldn't be putting me off the, the, the wigs and everything, the gowns and all that, because that's there to try and uh, intimidate you, you know, when you go. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, so so I, I literally go to those levels, you know what I mean? You know, when I was in, when I, when I was in the, when I was in the scrubs and I, 
when the 18 years hit me, I, I had my moment of whatever, and that's the first when I first saw the psychiatrist, you know what I mean? One of the top ones in the country. And he gave me the books he learned from. You know what I mean? Literally, he went, yes, I want you to read these. Then he bought me, I mean, people do that for you, like when you're, you're, you're at fucking rock bottom, he bought me two books by uh, De Bono called Lateral Thinking and Positive Thinking. You know, that got me interested in that sort of thing, you know. And then he, but he did come and get the, the books back. Um, two years later in Gartree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. James, boy, would you like to finish up on anything else? No, just to say, you know what I mean, that um, it has been an amazing life that, uh, that that I've led. But so have other people. Um, some people, they just might not be able to say it or they haven't got the the, the thing or whatever. Confidence as well. The confidence, uh, yeah, whatever, you know. But um, I've had a wonderful life. I've met wonderful people. Um, however, I have suffered massively. You know, when, when, you're lying, when you're in solitary confinement, counting fucking bricks on the wall, you know what I mean? And you've put your mum and that through fucking all that security, your wife or your daughter or whatever, through all that security. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You fucking, you're criminalising them as well. So that's not what um, what I'm about. That's why, that's when I gave it up, you see. And when I gave it up, when I gave it up, I gave it up. I didn't do it no more. Because I knew they would be after me massively. And then when I won the court, for my leg well they wouldn't be on me massively again wouldn't they to try and think yeah he might, he's got to be at it or whatever you know mm -hmm. well, I haven't been you know what I mean and uh, I've now got a very I've got a successful career doing poetry and uh, I do like art dinner speeches I do fucking you know I help people for nothing you know and they speak to me and I try and advise them you know what I mean about things you know mm -hmm. what I mean so I ain't got long left on this planet maybe another 50, 60 years <laughs> mm -hmm. got a few banks and listen, you then yeah and what it is, again, the only reason why I don't do that no more is because one thing is that for me now is is that I I don't, um, I've never valued money. It's never, uh, you'd think that I was grown with, I had fucking millions of it. Uh, but what I realised at the end of the day is that money don't make you happy. It don't make, for you need X amount of money, obviously, you know what I mean? But that won't make you happy. So I don't, that's not my buzz now. That's not what I do, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I do other things, you know what I mean? Thank God. Where can people watch, see your poetry, James, or read it? Yeah, so uh, you could go onto YouTube and see it on the... So I've I done a show at the Roundhouse. I, I wrote these poems, I wrote 20 poems, and in three months later, I've done a show at the Roundhouse, right? Because I've never been taught. When with my poetry, it ain't like what you can imagine, like walking through fucking meadows with tulips and all that. Oh, no, 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 this is quite different. You know what I mean? I won't listen to other poets. I'll get up. I even play with, 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 with sound and, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and silence with one of my poems, you know what I mean? Um, it shocked, some of the words I shot. Like one of my ones is called My Rubber Valentine. Rub, where I, you know, I, I imagine bringing out a rubber doll for something to eat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that way then, with my, the way I think in my mind, I can't get into trouble. In when I was doing armed robbers and everything, um, and I, and I, you know, I planned some beautiful things. You know, like, you know when I came out, I, I'd done some some beautiful stuff. And uh, but when would it stop? I just kept going on and on because I love it. Yeah. You know. But as I say, what everyone must realise in its life is its families. All you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's where you get all your pleasure, all your happiness, and everything from. You know. James, boy, would you like to finish up on anything else? No, just to say, I just want to say like. Like, thank you to you guys like, for, uh, you know, having me here, um, you know, and anyone, the people who put up with me and perceived to have, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's my beautiful family. And um, I just want to say beautiful. Yeah, thank, thank you so you much for meeting you. Yeah, and likewise. once again, you're a superstar, yeah, you, man, you. you know what I mean? Yeah, good luck, mate, and all the best, brother. Brilliant. Thank, thank you so you. much.